Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you how to install additional lens types into Affinity Photo and how to set up the developer assistant so it works correctly for you. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. When you open up a raw file in Affinity Photo, it automatically loads into the developer persona, which is this icon here in the middle and when you go to the right side, you have different tabs here. And one of these tabs says lens. And with the raw file, you can then apply a lens profile to your picture. So it will automatically be corrected. So for example, the lens has a certain type of bend in it. So the picture looks a little bit different and you want to correct it. So it looks actually natural. Also, there is a curve applied and there's noise reduction. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on that helps you to get a really good looking picture. But sometimes your lens or camera type is not there. So how to do that? That's pretty easy. You go into your browser and you go to GitHub. So this is something one of my followers suggested. He's called Martin. Thank you for that. And there's something called Lens Fun. I will link this in the video description in case the link would change in the future. Go on GitHub and go here to search and enter Lens Fun and then you can find it. And this is constantly updated by a team, as you can see, of 38 contributors or so a lot of people are working on this. And what you want to do here is that when you're on this page, go here where it says code, click on that, you get this little pop down menu and click on download zip file like so. So you download that into your download folder. I'm on Windows, as you can see, and then you would go here, click on that. And this opens this up. You can already look in the folder, but I would suggest that you click on extract all. So this will extract it into a folder like this. You can see extraction going on. And the next thing is that you now have the extracted folder. So with that, click on this. You have a lot of stuff in here you don't really need. And the most important thing here is that you click on the data folder and then you click on the DB folder. And here you can see different kind of camera types and brands. Looks a little bit overwhelming. Don't be confused by that. It's pretty easy because this is sorted by compact cameras. Then here is a category that says mill. These are the bridge cameras. And then down here you have your SLR cameras sorted by the type of brand. So you can see here's Canon, there's Nikon, Leica, there's a lot of stuff in here. Good. How do you get that into Affinity Photo? Go back to Affinity Photo and then go to Edit and Preferences. Click here on General and then down here it says Open Lens Profile Folder in Explorer. So click on that and this will open up a folder. You can see I already have two files in here and then go down here and select the other folder from before, which is the DB folder here. And so you have this side by side as this and then select what you need from here. What is your camera type and what is your camera brand? Let's say, for example, I want to install it for SLRs from Canon. I just click and drag this over here and this will just move it here. So now I have this in here too. And then the only thing you have to do, the next thing you want to do is to go to file exit. So you close Affinity Photo and then reopen Affinity Photo and reopen your raw file. And already now you have the new lens types installed for you and you can find them over here in this long list. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff in here, a lot of different lens types. And usually in a raw file, there will be the name saved of the lens that you have used. So it will automatically be selected here. In case it's not selected for you, you can still look inside of the list. You can also with these hearts save favorites for you that you often use stuff like that. You can click on recently used so you can see what type of lenses you have recently used with your photos. This can make the process easier. Okay, so now there's one more thing I want to show you and that's um, is 
Up here, you have this little icon that says Assistant Manager. You click on that and this opens up your Develop Assistant. And there you have different settings in there and you might check if everything is set up in the way you want it to be. So the raw engine Serif Labs, that's okay. There's my choice here. Um, default lens profile, I would say you go to auto select. So it selects it for you, depending on what information is saved in the raw file. You could also use last use or none, but auto select works best here. Then for noise correction, you can choose between only color reduction or color and luminance reduction and take no action. So if you don't know what color and luminance reduction is, there is color noise, which means that the pixels have different kind of variation in the colors. And this can be noise that is color noise. And then you have luminance noise, which means the pixels have a noise in the brightness of each pixel. So these are two different types. I have mine set up to apply color and luminance reduction. This is based on camera and lens type for the noise reduction. The next thing you want to look at is tone curve. And again, here you can say no action or apply tone curve. This is a tone curve that is suggested based on the raw file again. So this also fits the lens type and the camera type to help you adjust the curve in the right way. And then of course, down here you have exposure bias. Again, here you can decide what you want to have and there is apply exposure bias as default, apply exposure bias as initial state and take no action. And again, these exposures are based on the raw file, what it tells the software about the camera and about the lens type. The difference between default and initial is that again, this is based on the raw file information of the camera and the lens type. One of them is zeroed for the values and the other one uses the initial values. So, I would use the initial values for that. And then you have set it up in the way you want. So these are the different settings you can use here. This should actually correct the lens for you. Sometimes it doesn't do it correctly. And then you can use all these values here. You can see for the distortion and horizontal, this moves it around in that way. Vertical moves it around in this way. And rotation, of course, is good for the horizon and, of course, also for the camera rotation. And then you can scale it in and out, but only all of these in a certain value. You can see here it can go from 50 to 150, but there is no more extreme way I can go with that. Also, before you go, I want to invite you to my Facebook super fan group. There is already 1,499 people in there. We are an amazing, lovely community helping each other to improve our skills. I do mini live streams. I do polls. I interact with the communities. There's a lot of fun in there. I provide interesting materials also to help you improve your skill on top of that. And you will be notified about events that I'm doing like my live stream stuff like that so you should join it's a lot of fun and of course it's completely free so i'm looking forward to see you there have a good day and see you soon bye